Hi, this is Jerry Buta. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to configure Remote Desktop to securely access your home PC from any remote location. I'm going to show you how to first set up the port forwarding for RDP on the router, followed by how to secure and encrypt the connection using recommended Microsoft settings for securing Remote Desktop. For this tutorial, I'm using two Windows 10 Professional Edition desktops installed in VMware Workstation as virtual machines. The process I'm going to show you will be identical to what you will do on your own PC and router with the exception that my IP address and your IP address are most likely different. There's also a pretty good chance we don't have the same router either, so you'll have to take what you learn here and apply it on your own router in your own environment. This Windows 10 virtual machine is going to be the target PC. This PC represents your home computer or any computer inside a network that you own and control. This is the PC you will connect to remotely. This Windows 10 virtual machine is the external or remote PC. This represents your work PC, your laptop, a friend's PC, a hotel, library, cruise ship, any PC that is not in the same network with the target PC. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll call it your work PC. The first thing to do is to find out the external or public facing IP address of the router. We do not want the IP address of the PC inside your network. You want to use the IP address that would reach your router from somewhere outside your network. To do this, open your browser and go to Google and type in what is my IP address and Google will tell you what your public facing IP address is. You'll want to write that down because you'll need it later. Now unless you have a fixed IP address from your ISP, that IP address can change. Particularly, it can change when you reboot your cable modem. It doesn't happen very often, but it's probably a good idea to check it every now and then after you set this up because when you're at work and you go to connect to your home PC, for example, if the public IP address at home changed, it's not going to work. If you don't want to constantly have to check your IP address, you may want to check out DynDNS.org or NoIP.com. Those services offer Dynamic DNS or DDNS, which automatically keeps track of your IP address for you. Your router may also have its own free service. Netgear, for example, has their Netgear DDNS service. Dynamic DNS is outside the scope of this video. Just know that if you own and control your own router, then it's likely available to you should you want to use it. For simplicity, this tutorial instructs you to change your PC's IP address to a fixed address using the network adapter settings. While this can be done on the router, it's outside the scope of this video. If you have a fixed IP address on your PC already, you can skip over the sections of the video that show you how to set it. So the first thing to do is enable remote access on each PC that you want to access from outside your home or office. Right click on the computer icon on your desktop and select properties. Alternatively, you can open the system applet in the control panel and click system to get to the system properties of your PC. On the left side, click remote settings. In the remote settings dialog, Ignore the Allow Remote Assistance setting. It doesn't matter if it's checked or not. Select Allow Remote Connections to this computer and make sure Allow Connections Only from Computers Running Remote Desktop with Network Level Authentication is checked. You can select specific users and specify only the users that are allowed to access the PC from outside your network. Your own user account already has access. Click OK two times to enable remote access. Now you will enable the firewall for remote connections. Open the control panel, go to Windows Firewall and click Allow an app or feature through Windows Firewall. Click on the Change Settings button to enable settings changes here. Scroll the list to find Remote Desktop. Check it if it is not checked already. Enable the Private checkbox but do not enable the Public checkbox. Click OK. Now we want to make sure we have a fixed IP address on the PC. Open the control panel, Network and Sharing Center. Click on Change Adapter Settings. Click the local area connection or whatever your adapter is. You may have a wireless adapter only or a wired Ethernet adapter or both. The main thing is to pick the one that your PC is likely to be connected to when you're away. We're going to document the IP addresses of the DNS servers and the default gateway that already exists on the network adapter's dynamically assigned IP address. 
Right click the local area connection and click status. Click details. This dialog has all the information we need. The IPv4 address is assigned by my router. I'm going to be changing the IPv4 setting to use this IP address as a fixed IP address. Write down the IP address you see here so you can enter it manually in the next step. Of course, if you're familiar with your router and feel comfortable finding a different IP address that is unused on your network, then by all means use whichever IP address you want to use. Go ahead and write down the default gateway IP address and the primary and secondary DNS server IP addresses. Once you've written down the IPv4 IP address and the primary and secondary DNS server IP addresses, click close only once so we return to the local area connection status dialog. Click the properties button to open the properties of the connection. Click on the internet protocol version 4 item and click the properties button. In the properties dialog that opens, click to select the use the following IP address radio button. I'm going to use the IP address that I wrote down in the prior step. You should not use this IP address unless it happens to be the same IP address that you wrote down from your own system. In the IP address field, set up your fixed IP address. The one I'm going to use is the one I wrote down earlier, 192.168.1.8. Accept the default subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and enter the default gateway that you wrote down in a previous step. Next you'll enter the DNS servers that you wrote down in the previous step. My system uses the router's IP address as the DNS server, so I'll use 192.168.1.1. Your DNS server addresses may be different, but you should have written them down already, so type in what you wrote down previously. Click OK click close and click close again. Your IP address should now be changed to a fixed IP address. Right click on the local area connection, click status and click details to confirm the IP address. Now it's time to open your router configuration. Open your browser and type http colon slash slash followed by the default gateway address that you used in your IPv4 configuration. For example, since my default gateway is 192.168.1.1, I will use http colon slash slash 192.168.1.1 and hit enter on the keyboard which opens my router login screen. On a side note, since you're working through this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you know how to open your router configuration. If you don't, then you may not want to continue with this tutorial. However, if you do know how to get into your router configuration, I strongly advise you to change the password from the default router password if you haven't done so already. Now every router is different, so yours will not look like this unless you have the same router. In this particular router, the setting I need is in the advanced setup, port forwarding, port triggering settings. On another router that I own, it's under the gateway settings. The thing to look for is port forwarding. On this router, it says port forwarding. On my other router it says single port forwarding. The main thing is that all routers should have a setting for port forwarding and you'll have to find it. Once you have the port forwarding settings open, create a new setting for RDP. In some routers you can name it, so name it RDA for remote desktop access or whatever you want to. Type in the external port you want to use. In this example I'm using 12345. Type in the internal port you want to use. In this example, and at this point in the tutorial, we'll just type in 3389, which is the default RDP port. I'm basically obscuring the default RDP port of 3389 and forwarding the port 12345 to port 3389. This is so that users on the internet can't just try and get to your PC using the known port 3389. In this case, we're opening port 12345 to the general internet and the router will translate it to port 3389. Next, you will put in the IP address of the target PC that you want to reach from outside your network. In my case, it's 192.168.1.8. You will want to use your own IP address here. To summarize, I'm programming the router to forward port 12345 requests to port 3389 of the PC at IP address 192.168.1.8. Save or apply the settings. Next, we're going to try and connect to the target machine from this Windows 10 remote PC. 
We'll be connecting through the internet to the target PC. We'll use the proper IP address and port to do this. On the remote PC, I'll open remote desktop connection and enter the public facing IP address that we wrote down earlier, followed by a colon and then the port. This is very important. To access the target PC, you must use the external or public facing IP address, not the IP address of the PC itself. You're going out to the internet from one PC, then coming back into your network requesting that port we set up for the target PC previously. Click connect. Enter the username and password for the PC you are connecting to. When prompted regarding the remote PC's identity, ignore it. You know the PC that you're connecting to. Click yes and in a few seconds the desktop for the target PC will appear. In the real world, you won't be using two virtual machines to do this. You will likely set up only one PC for remote access at home and you'll access it from work. Click on the X at the right side of the remote desktop bar at the top of the screen to close the remote session. Click OK if presented with a disconnect dialog. Now let's secure this connection between the remote PC and the target PC because it's very dangerous to open ports on your router without securing the connection and the data. At the very least, you'll want to encrypt the data that is traveling between the two PCs at either end of the RDP session. So let's get back to the target PC and do some more configuration. Since we logged into this target PC remotely, we'll have to log back in. Once logged back in, minimize the browser screen that's showing the router's port forwarding settings for now. At this point, the target PC is already set up to be connected to with the remote desktop, but we're now going to configure more settings to achieve maximum security. The first thing to do is to make sure that any user account that you're going to use to log on to the target PC has a strong password. It should have 8 or more characters, 12 or more as recommended, with numbers, lowercase letters, and uppercase letters, and special characters. If the password for the user account you will use to log into the remote PC is not strong or is easy to guess, you'll want to go change it now before going any further. So now let's open local security policy. On the keyboard, use the Windows key and the letter R to open the run dialog. Type secpol.msc and hit OK to open the local security policy. If you get a message for administrative templates, ignore it and click OK. Expand local policies, click on user rights assignments, and then find the allow log on through remote desktop services. Double click it. It's really a good recommendation to remove both of the group's administrators and remote desktop users for security reasons. The reason we remove those groups is because, for example, you could set up an admin account on your PC with a weak password and forget that you did, and now you'd be exposed. Your PC would be open to anybody from outside who knows your IP address. If you have a weak password on an admin user account, then there is a chance that with enough effort a hacker might be able to get in. So in this dialog, we're only going to keep the user or group that you want to allow access to the target PC with remote desktop. And that user or users must have strong passwords. Click add user or group and add to this list the user account that you want to allow access with remote desktop. Click OK to close this dialog and then close the local security policy dialog. Now we'll open the local group policy. Again, use the Windows key and the letter R to open the run dialog. Type gpedit.msc and hit OK or enter. Again, ignore and OK the administrative templates dialog if it appears. In the left side local computer policy list, expand administrative templates, Windows components, remote desktop services, remote desktop session host, and then click on security. Double click set client connection encryption level. Set this setting to enabled and set the encryption level to high level. This will give us 128 bit encryption. Click OK. Double click the require secure RPC communication. Enable this setting. Click OK. Double click Require use of specific security layer for remote RDP connections. Set this to enabled and set the security layer to SSL. Click OK. Double click Require user authentication for remote connections by using network level authentication. Set this to enabled. Click OK. Once those changes have been made, you can close the local group policy editor. Now this is an optional step, but I really recommend doing this. You should obscure the RDP port on the PC itself. It would prevent an internal hacker in your network from accessing your PC with port 3389. Again, it's not necessary, but if you want to have your PC respond to anything other than the default port 3389 for any reason, this is how you do it. Use the Windows key and R to open the run dialog. Type REGEDIT and hit enter to open up the registry editor. Work your way down to the following path. 
H key local machine, system, current control set, control, terminal server, win stations, RDP, TCP. You can see the whole path down in the status bar of the registry editor. Once there, find the port number key. Double click to open it. Change the base to decimal and type in a value for the port number you want to use. Write down the value because you're going to need it later. I'm going to change mine to 23456. On a side note, you don't want to use 23456 on your own system. Use something unique and known only to you. Click OK and close the registry editor. Whether or not you change the default RDP port, you're going to need to allow the RDP port through the Windows firewall. To do this, click the Start button, type Windows Firewall, hit Enter. The firewall opens. Click Advanced Settings. The Windows Firewall with Advanced Security window opens. Select Inbound Rules, then right click on it and select New Rule. When the wizard pops up, select Port. Click Next. Make sure TCP is selected, then enter the port number. When I showed you how to change it in the registry, I used port 23456, so I will put 23456 here. If you change the default port in the registry, you'll need to put that port here. If you keep the default port 3389, you still need to put that here. After entering the port number, click Next. The default value of Allow the Connection is OK, so click Next. On the When Does This Rule Apply screen, uncheck Public and click Next. Give the rule a name like Custom RDP Port or whatever you want to use, then click Finish. Let's restart the target PC to make those settings take effect. The next thing to do is to go to another computer on your network and make sure you can access the target PC with RDP on the local area network. I'll use the remote PC virtual machine to test this, but you'll want to test it using another computer on your network. The thing you're testing is the ability to access the target PC using RDP from another PC in the same network. We're not testing access from a remote computer yet. That'll come next. You can access it by its internal IP address or the PC name, followed by a colon, then the port number. In the case of the default RDP port 3389, you can leave the colon and the port number off. But if you set up an obscure port number, then you'll use that port number after the colon. So on the PC you want to use to connect to the target PC, use Windows R and type MSTSC and hit enter. Here you'll use the target machine name. If you set up a custom RDP port for that PC, then use the machine name followed by a colon and the custom port number. In my case, the target PC name is Win10-Target, and I used the port 23456 as a custom RDP port, so I'll type Win10-Target colon 23456. Click Connect. The desktop of the remote PC should load. If you get a security dialog regarding a certificate, connect anyway. At the top of the remote desktop screen, you should see a blue bar. Click the X on the right edge of the blue bar to disconnect the remote desktop session. If you don't see the bar, move your mouse to the top edge of the screen and the blue bar will unhide itself so you can then click the X to close the remote session. The next step is to try and connect through the internet to the target PC by using the public facing IP address of the router where the target PC is located. For this tutorial, I'll be using the remote virtual machine to connect through the internet to the target PC. If you previously edited the registry and changed the RDP port on the target PC to something other than the default RDP port 3389, you'll have to modify your router's port forwarding configuration to reflect this. If you did not change the default RDP port on the target PC, then you can skip this section. Go back to your router's port forwarding screen where you set up port forwarding previously. Edit the port forwarding settings so that external port 12345 forwards to the internal port number that you set up as a custom port on the target PC. For this tutorial, I changed the default RDP port on the target PC to 23456. So I will change the port forwarding so that port 12345 forwards to port 23456. Save the setting. And that's it. Now you've set up your PC to be accessed securely with RDP from a PC outside of your home network. You've also obscured the RDP port on the target PC so that it's not easily accessed by another PC in your network. Now it's time to test our RDP setup through the internet. Once again, go to another PC on your network and make sure that you can access the target PC through the internet. Of course, you're going to want to do a real-world test from a PC that is physically located somewhere else. 
But for right now, this will work to prove that you can access the target PC through the internet because we're going to be using the public facing IP address and the external port. Again, I'll use the remote PC virtual machine to test this. What you're testing this time is the ability to access the PC using RDP from a PC physically located outside your network. To simulate this, I'll just use the remote PC virtual machine. You can access the target PC by its public facing IP address followed by a colon and then the port number. In the case of default RDP port 3389, you can leave the colon and the port number off. But if you set up a custom external port number on the router, then you'll use that port number after the colon. On the remote PC, use Windows R and type MSTSC and hit enter. Here you'll use the public facing IP address of the target PC's router. If you set up a custom RDP port on the router, use the public facing IP address of the target PC followed by a colon and the custom port number. In my case, I'll use the public facing IP address of the target PC. I used port 12345 as a custom RDP port, so I'll type the public facing IP address followed by a colon, then 12345. Click connect. And finally, if you set everything up correctly, the desktop of the remote PC should load. If you get a security dialog regarding your certificate, connect anyway. And that's it. You've completed setting up and securing a PC so it can be accessed with a secure encrypted connection from a PC physically located outside your router and firewall. This is Jerry Boot Dot signing off. Have a totally awesome day.